said, I am there. Are you ready to learn about your freedom tools tonight? Yes. Are you, are you tired of being kicked around by the devil? Yes. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to kick him around. Yeah. We're going to be on the offense, not the defense. He's a defeated foe. And this, this teaching, this series that Pastor Jeff and I are doing are in no way to talk about the devil or to give him honor or glory in any way. This is to give you tools so you know who your enemy is and you know how to fight him. Whether you're part of our, our team, our prayer team, our ministry of helps team that, that help us minister on Sunday morning, or whether you're here because uh, you just want to learn how to fight the enemy and have victory over him, or maybe you're, you're part of both those categories. For whatever reason you're here, God is going to touch you tonight. Do you believe that? I declare and I proclaim now in the name of Jesus, God is going to touch you tonight. And we are going to be better at spiritual warfare as we learn about our freedom tools. Tomorrow morning at the 10 o'clock service, I'm going to be talking tomorrow morning about fighting the invisible war. And it goes right along with this. You're going to really really uh, enjoy the new series that I start tomorrow. If you have your Bibles, turn in your Bibles today or tonight rather to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23, 1 Thessalonians 5 23. And as we continue our series on freedom tools, are you enjoying this so far? Yes. Okay, three of you are. I, are you enjoying it so far? Yes. Okay, if not, just lie to me. I'll feel better. Okay, I'm teasing. How many of you know that we're in a war? And I'm not talking about the Ukraine. That's a war. And that's a real war. But how many of you know we're in a real war, but it's an invisible war? But it's not any less of a war than the wars we see. The only difference is this war that we're in, we can't see. It's kind of like fighting in the dark. But how many of you know that Jesus is the light of the world? Yes, yes. And he will illuminate your path. He will illuminate my path as we go forward in him. Now, Jesus, when he was here on earth, he only came against one group of people. And the one group of people that he came against and he talked about a lot was the religious crowd. Jesus didn't come against sinners. He didn't come against sin. He preached against sin. He told us what sin was and how to stay away from it. But the one thing that Jesus could not stand, the one thing that irritates me is the spirit of religion. Because the spirit of religion will kill you. People think it's godly and it's holy and it's nice. No, religion is not godly, holy, and nice. Religious is a, religion is of the devil, and it was designed to kill you. Okay? Now, how many of you have ever heard this, this term? Today's, re, or, yeah, yesterday's revival is today's religion. Have you ever heard that? Yesterday's revival is today's religion. Today's revival will be tomorrow's religion. What do I mean by that? Because God in every generation of the earth comes down and he touches earth with his power and his presence. Right. And then what happens is people get saved, they get delivered, they get set free. And then what happens? Man starts organizing it and putting it in a neat little box with a neat little bowl on top of the box. And instead of it becoming a move of God, it becomes a manufactured move of man that's imitating what God has done. And that makes it religion and that makes it bad. What I believe God is doing in the earth today is he's sending a revival that will never be duplicated and will take us out of this place. Aren't you glad for that? I have nothing but the utmost respect for Rick Warren and the Seeker Sensitive Movement back in the 80s and the 90s. Rick Warren, I believe, got a revelation from God on how to reach the lost. 
and he implemented that in Orange County. He moved, he moved to Orange County, California from, from somewhere in Texas, I believe it was. And he started with zero. He knew nobody. And it soon became one of the largest churches in America. Why? Because he followed God's plan. It was a move of God. But what happened? Man started packaging it. And the thing about Rick Warren and why he was so successful is because he heard from God and nobody else was doing it. And now, 20, 30 years later, what's happening? What Rick Warren did that was unusual is now the norm, and just about every church in America is doing it. But now it's not God doing it, maybe not in every case, but in most cases, it's not God doing it. It's man manufacturing and copying the revival that Rick experienced. Are you following me? And we cannot get into... We cannot get into packaged services. We've got to get into God doing what God wants yes. to do. And when God does what God wants to do, guess what? We're going to be a light where bugs are going to be drawn to it. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever there's a light and there's a revival, guess what? Every demon in town will come out to check you out. You may not know this or not, but the devil goes to church. Yes. How many of you know that? How many of you know that there are demons in church? I'm not talking about the lady sitting next to you. I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking about real devils, real demons. And you know why we know that there are demons in church? Do you, do you know how we know that? Because when Jesus was here on earth, he taught about casting out demons. And he said, when you cast out a demon, he said they have to go and they go to a dry place. There's nothing drier than a religious church. Come on, that was funnier and more accurate than you know. And it's our job to cast them out. We want those that are possessed and oppressed to attend our services. We want them to come because we want them to be free. Now that we have opened the door to the power and the presence of God, and now that we have declared spiritually in this invisible war that we're fighting, that we are, as Grace Assembly, called and we accept the call to set the captives free, people are going to come in. Some of them are going to be downright demonic, have nothing to do with God. Those are the easy ones. Let me tell you, the hardest Spirit to cast out, and I'm talking about my experience here. The hardest spirit, the hardest demon to cast out is a demon of religion. Right. Yeah. It's mean, it's religious, it knows more scripture than you do. And it's only by the power of God that that sucker can be driven out. They may come in like this, as, as a few weeks ago. Some people come in speaking in tongues. It's not real tongues. It's a mimic. And you've got to be aware that when you hear that, does your spirit say that's God or does your spirit go, there's something wrong with that? And as leaders, you need to pay attention to that. And what do you do? You start praying against that in the name of Jesus when that starts coming in. But God has called us to set the captives free. And we're not just talking about leaders and pastor people. We're talking about you that is sitting there in the pew tonight. You that is, uh, that is watching at home. We have got to all come together as an army to fight this invisible yes, war. Yes. And it's not just going to be the preacher people and the leaders of the church. Somebody say amen. amen. The army of darkness is led by Satan and his demons. And they are out to destroy God by attacking and destroying God's people. Whether you want to know this or whether you like this or not, you are in a spiritual warfare right now. If you don't know Christ, you are in a war. And the battle is that you never come to Jesus Christ. Now this is the tool of the enemy. And this is where wokeism is right now. Have you heard of wokeism? Okay, that's of the devil. That's not a good thing. The only thing that the woke movement will wake you up to is more sin. 
Okay? But th th this is how the devil works. If, if, especially if you're not a believer. He will get you to either believe that the devil doesn't exist. Or he will get you so superstitious that you'll be so afraid that you'll run from anything spiritual. Okay? But let, let me tell you, one of the biggest things that Satan does in America is he is a stealth bomber. What do, what do I mean by that? Because most people in America today don't believe the devil exists. And guess what? He likes that. Because if you don't believe that he exists, bam, he'll pick you up. And don't think for one minute that if you don't come to God, then you'll be saved from him. Guess what? You're still going to be attacked by the devil. Why? Because John 10.10 10 says that Jesus came to give us life and the life more abundantly. But the thief came to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. I have a good friend who pastors in um, Turlock, Ron Estevez, and he, he's got a great church, Harvest Church. And uh, he had a, 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 a couple in his church that their son, he was a young adult, I think in his early 20s, and he was a Satanist. And, uh, and, and his parents attended the church. And uh, he got a call from his parents one day that the guy had died. He got killed. And so they wanted Pastor Ron to preach the funeral at their church. And he said yes. So he said he showed up that day at the church. The casket was there. And to make matters work, this is a Satanist who followed the devil, had nothing to do with Christ. And the funeral just so happened to land on Halloween. So he walked in. And there was a room, a church, filled with demonic uh, fo or followers of the devil, part of the Satanist crowd in the city. And they were sitting there glaring at him. And you know what his, you know what his text was for that funeral that day? John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come to give you life. And he said to those people, he said to those Satanists in that room, he said, your friend is dead today because the devil killed him. The devil's not going to give you a break even if you're on his team. Because he is still going to kill you. So you might as well get on the good team. And then we know Christians, we fight all the time against spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual uh, wickedness in high places. Amen? Amen? And so we've got to learn the importance of spiritual alignment. We cannot fight an effective war without spiritual alignment. So we're going to talk about that tonight. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And I hope you're taking notes on your phone or on a pad or something. Because you're going to want to read these scriptures. We're going to give you a lot of scriptures tonight. It says, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. How many of you want to be sanctified through and through? Made clean and made right before God. He goes on to say, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. A Christian out of an alignment is still a Christian but he's not going to be as effective as he can be when he's in spiritual alignment, spirit soul and body now how many of you know that when your body is sick that it affects your spirit and it affects your soul, your mind, your will and emotions that's why the devil wants the church of Jesus Christ to believe that healing is in the past and not for you. Why? You need physical healing for your body to be in alignment with your spirit and your soul. How many of you know that when your soul, your mind, you're having trouble, you're being oppressed with, uh, uh, with depression. How many of you know it affects you spiritually and it affects you uh, bodily? That's why we've got to be lined up in alignment. Our body, our, excuse me, our spirit must be strong. 
And most churches stop right there. But your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions must be equally strong. And your body must be strong to be the effective warrior that God wants you to be. Are you tracking with me today? Yeah. So what happens? Satan fights to get one of those things out of alignment so he can get you out of alignment. How many of you have ever been to a chiropractor? Yeah. yeah. Why do you go to a chiropractor? Because your back gets out of alignment, right? Can you still go to work with your back out of alignment? Yeah. Can you still think with your back out of alignment? Not very well, because all you can think about is your painting. So what do you do? Your body's in pain, it's affecting every area of your life. You go to a chiropractor, your chiropractor lays you down on that table and gives you one of those, snot comes out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they hit you hard. But your back goes into an alignment. Now, if your back was out of alignment all the time, you'd walk around. You could still do everything that you did before, but you're not going to be as effective. But when you get an alignment, you're going to do your life, and it's going to be effective. Spiritually, it's the same way. When your spirit goes out of alignment, you need to go to chiropractor, spiritual chiropractor Jesus, and let him put you back in shape. You hear what I'm saying? Just because someone's out of alignment doesn't mean you're going to hell. There's a lot of churches, a lot of religions. Well, if you don't keep the rules, you're going to hell. No. When you accept Christ, hell's off the table. Satan's not worried about you going to hell. He just wants to make you as ineffective as he can. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about the importance of being in alignment. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk tonight about Getting in spiritual alignment and staying there. What's number one, Jeff? Number one is because of the fall, we lost our proper spiritual alignment. You know, Pastor just talked about chiropractor. You know, when you, you got that sleet stack walk, you know, land of the loss. And you start walking sideways, as he was talking about. Listen, the same, the same reason why we get adjusted, we need a spiritual adjustment. Physically, you just can't function properly when you're out of alignment, right? Or even better example is your car. Has your car ever been out of alignment? You know, that, that sucker will either track left or track right, but it won't drive straight. And it's usually because you hit a curb or you hit a, uh, one of them speed bumps at 50 miles an hour at Walmart. <laughs> I hate those things. <laughs> Unless you get that misalignment correct. It can actually cause you to have a wreck because it will destroy and, and ruin your tires. So having a misalignment problem means that things will not function as intended. And so it is with you and I in the spiritual. So when we're talking about walking in freedom, we must, like a doctor or a mechanic, we need to diagnose the issue, which in our case is not being properly aligned. When your back goes out, it's usually because you did when you should have said it. <laughs> right? Uh, so the question is, we're all born out of alignment. And the reason being is because of the fall. It, it, it's because of the fall. You know, Adam and Eve, when they disobeyed God and they partook of, the, of that forbidden apple, they, they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's when everything changed. Yeah. They thought, he thought that God was withholding something from them. And the devil lied. And they were tricked. So they disobeyed and voila, they lost their proper spiritual alignment. That's the alignment that you and I were created for. So we know that for starters. But even as believers, Things can uh, happen to us, or we will allow things to happen, or we'll be involved in things which literally take us out of alignment. Now, the first point is this. Understand that you were created, right? You were created in the image of God. We talked about that last Saturday. And, and we know that God, okay, the Trinity, he's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We know that is the Trinity. Now, you and I, we were created in the image of God. Here's a fancy word for it, tripartite. Everybody say tripartite. 
Right. Okay, you impress all your friends. <laughs> Basically, that just means that you're made up of three parts. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. We just read that as Paul declared in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. So we kind of break it down. Your spirit is that part of you, and if you're taking notes, that the spirit, your spirit, is that part of you that communicates with God and the supernatural realm. The Bible tells us that God is spirit. So we communicate with God through our spirit. Now the soul is defined as the self. We know that it's comprised of your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's who you are. It's your personality. And we've got some beautiful souls in here tonight. Amen? Yes. And this body, you know, this body that we get up in the morning and we spend hours grooming and, and, and painting. <laughs> Lifting and fixing. Fixing and altering sometimes. That's, that's our flesh. And it allows us to communicate with our physical world through our five senses. Through seeing and hearing, tasting, touching, and, and smelling. I want you to look up on the board here. Here's a diagram that will help us understand. This is our how we are made. This is our tripartite cell. And we know that in the very center, or what we would say is first, this is what proper spiritual alignment looks like. Your spirit is first, your soul is second, and your body is third. That is the proper alignment. That is how God designed you to function. Now, as a result of the fall, and since we were born in sin, we understand that our spirits are dead. But when you received Christ, you received that Christ life, and you were born again, your spirit was quickened. It was made alive by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the ruach, the wind of the spirit began to blow, and you came back alive. Yeah. Now, if you remember, God breathed into Adam the breath of life. That was the spirit life. That you see right there in the very beginning. Spirit life. And Adam became a living soul. Which means he became a complete person. Spirit, soul, and body. But after Adam sinned, his spirit became dead. The Bible tells us this. And this is another way of saying that, that Adam's spirit went to sleep. In other words, it became dormant. It doesn't mean it was non-existent. It was just... That now it did not function at all. So it was as good as dead. Now Adam and all those that followed after him now had a function in their world by only through their soul, their mind, will, and emotions, and their body. Now, I don't know if you know, but I know this for myself. If I operate out of my soul, my mind, will, and emotions, then I base everything on my feelings. And I respond accordingly by my feelings. So you can kind of get a picture of what now Adam and all those that follow, now we're working out of our emotions. It's all how you feel. It's not necessarily based on facts, right. but it's based on, on the emotions. And that's what the mo okay. woke movement is all about today. It's how you feel. How you feel. If you feel like a woman, you're a woman. If you feel like you're an eggplant, you're an eggplant. <laughs> but let's stick with facts. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, was bad. I had the internet. That, that, that was good. That was good. Now, do you remember? There was another tree in that garden. Now, they partook of the, the, the one that God said not to, but there was another tree in that garden. Mm -hmm. And that was the tree of life. Right. And you know, something interesting when you read, uh, after Adam and Eve fell, and they were banished from the garden. What did God do? He, he denied access to that tree of life. As a matter of fact, he placed a warring angel in front of it with a sword right. that flashed back and forth right. to keep people from partaking. Do you know what would have happened had Adam and Eve had taken, if they had taken from that tree of life in the state that they were, you know what would have happened? They would have lived in that fallen state. You and I would have lived in that fallen state for eternity. That's deep. That's deep. But God forbid that, you know, that tree of life is still in, in existence. 
God never did away with the tree. As a matter of fact, we'll get to see that tree because in the new Jerusalem, when it comes down, that tree is going to be there. But that tree is also a picture and a type of Jesus. It's life. It's eternal life. It's existing life. Amen. It's spirit life. And eternal life only exists through the sun. Now, I want them to throw up that second diagram, that second picture. And, and, and this is what misalignment looks like. See, either way, either you can put the soul first or the flesh first. And we see that the flesh, and it says it right up there. I don't know if you can see it. But we know that the flesh part of this is influenced by the world, our physical desires, and that mean old death. But our soul is ruled by our thoughts and what we believe. And if we allow ourselves to be governed by how we feel, we get in trouble. Especially if we're not governed by the Holy Spirit. Right. And that only happens in alignment with your spirit first. The, the, the spirit that is submitted to the Holy Spirit gets its facts and it gets its information from the Holy Spirit. He speaks only what the Father says. You don't hear that in the soul part of you. You hear that in your spirit person. Right. And he speaks only what the Father says. And it's through the Holy Spirit in, in our spirit that we experience and encounter the presence of God. He teaches, he guides, he leads. Do you know that the prophetic operates via from the Holy Spirit through your spirit? Mm -hmm. If people are out of alignment and they, they, they try to prophesy, guess what? They're prophesying out of their flesh. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of that in we the do. today. Yeah. They do. They, they have pizza the, the night before and then they prophesy out of how they feel. And, and of course, there, there's grace. We learn how to function in the prophetic. But I want you to understand that the way the prophetic operates, the way God designed it, is when you are in alignment and the Holy Spirit gives that prophetic word through your spirit and then it manifests out of your soul right. and, right. and through your, your body. Right. Listen, the God life flows through and into our spirit. Look, look at this great verse in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Right. So letting your sinful nature, that is your flesh, control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, control your mind leads to what? Life, Life and peace. Praise God. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. Did you know your flesh is always hostile to God? It doesn't like to do what God wants it to do. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature, their, their flesh and their soul, can never be God. Mm. So now we see what proper spiritual alignment looks like. Mm -hmm. Is it clear as mud? Yeah. Can you see how we were designed to function? You did a good job. And now if we lead with our soul and with our feelings or our emotions or our physical desires, our, our body will lead, us, will lead us right out of alignment. In other words, people, the car won't drive straight. And you can't walk straight. You can't walk straight. So what do we do about it? Well, I'm glad you asked, because pastor's going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was so smooth, I was waiting for him. <laughs> How many of you know that America is out of alignment? Yes. Sure. How many of you know that the world is out of alignment? Yes. Yes. Because what the world has done is they have taken a lie and presented it as truth. That's right. And we have to be very careful because it's so easy to slip into. Pastor Jeff, he, he said this so eloquently. It's not about what we feel that is truth. This is true. Right. Whether we feel it or not. Yeah. And see, America, in general, used to be guided by this book. Yeah, even in secular. Uh, they would be praying in our schools.
show that a uh, biological male, and he was t uh, told Dr. Phil and this other, I don't know who he was, another guy that was on this panel, that he was a woman. And the guy said, well, what's the definition of a woman? And this, this show was taped well back. We have a nominee of the Supreme Court in America that will not give us the definition of a woman. Okay? That, 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 those are the people that are going to be leading our country. And he looked at this guy back to Dr. Bill. He looked at the guy and he said, Oh, you're a woman? What's the definition of a woman? You know what the guy said? I don't know. And he said, Well, how can you be something that you don't know? This was his answer. Because I feel like a woman. <laughs> because what the world wants you to believe is that what you feel is the truth. Now, I'm not against these people. I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for him. And, and, and let me tell you uh, something that this man said that I agree with. He said, well, what, why do you think I feel that way? And the guy said, well, it could be mental illness. Yeah. And he goes, oh, that's a, oh. Well, what is mental illness? People that are mentally ill believe something's there that's not. People that are mentally ill believe something that's a lie to be the truth. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so we've got to stop running from the truth and hit the truth. And the, and the guy was very, and he said, Let me, and, and so the, the guy that says he was a woman, he looked at the guy and he says, well, what is your definition of a woman? And he goes, a female who is a human being. Wow. So profound to the point. And he said this, he said, you know what? He said, if somebody digs up our bones in a hundred years, they won't know what you believed about yourself, but your very bones will identify you as a male or a female. Because God put his stamp on male and female, even in your bones, your DNA, your, your, you, everything about you. Why? Because God created man and woman. Why? Because God is all man and God is all woman. And he created us as male and female to come together to be like God. And if we don't have that, then we're less about God. And that's the truth that the enemy wants to water down to make us less powerful. How do we respond to these people? In love. That's right. We don't put people down. Oh, I'm sorry, why do you feel that way? Ask them the questions. They can't even give you, uh, it, they can't even give you a definition of why. Because their belief is based on a lie. In America, you have the right as a citizen to believe about yourself anything you want to. But you don't have a right to make me go along with your charade. And if that's true, then the adjective and the pronouns that I want you to use about me when you refer to me is brilliant and handsome. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because those are the pronouns and the adjectives that I want to go by. You see how ridiculous that is? We don't get to, we don't get to pick those things. Right. We live in the truth of God's word. And when somebody comes in that's demonized, the first thing they will do is they will start lying. Do you have something we can pray about? No, but you can pray about my friend. They might smell like booze. They may reek like a brewery and say, oh, do you have a drink problem? No, but I have a friend that does. What do you do? Don't allow the Satan, just like this woke thing in America, don't allow Satan's lies to throw you off your game. Yeah. Get right back to the truth. Because when we're in alignment, we walk in truth. How do we walk in truth? If walk in alignment, let, let me give you two things real quick. Number one, walk by the Spirit. What gets us out of alignment is sin. Pastor Jeff talked about that. But what will help us walk in alignment is when we walk in the Spirit. When we live in this body, we call flesh. When we live by the flesh, as Pastor Jeff said, that means we do stuff that makes the flesh feel good. But when we walk in the Spirit, we do the things that is right according to the Spirit. And not only should you live by the Spirit, you know how you live by the Spirit? 
be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Let somebody in this church or on prayer team lay hands on you to receive the Holy Spirit with a gift of tongues. Why? Because, did you know, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow, speaking in tongues is part of your, your spiritual armor. And I'm going to prove it with the Word of God. we got to be in alignment by putting on the armor of God, by walking in the Spirit. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Galatians 5.16 says this, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. And the second thing, write this down, is abide in the vine. Let me ask you this question. Are you abiding in the vine on Sundays, but not Monday through Saturday? In other words, are you a Sunday-only Christian, or in your case, maybe a Saturday night Christian? There are a lot of people that you would not know they were a Christian by their lifestyle. Have you ever, have you ever worked for somebody for 10 years, and they go, oh yeah, I'm a Christian? You go, really? Yeah. I don't think you knew anything about God. <laughs> Why? Because they don't live. They're not abiding in the vine. They're abiding in their flesh, and they're abiding their time. That's religion. That's what must be destroyed. John 15, 4 says, Abide in me, and I abide, will abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. You want to walk free from spiritual, demonic oppression and possession? Abide in the vine. Not only... We as a church are going to help people abide in the vine. Not only are we going to help people help people by casting out the devil, we're going to disciple them to walk as a Christian. Right. Listen, Jack Hayford said this. He said, you can't cast out the flesh and you can't disciple a demon. You cast out the demon and then you disciple the flesh. Yeah. By the grace of God, the love of God, walking. Abiding in the vine. Pastor Jeff, land this airplane. That's good. <laughs> Here we come. Our approach. The next point is this. Two benefits. Let's talk about two benefits of proper money. This is what I want you to do. We don't have this verse on, on the screen, but I want you to, to get your Bibles or your uh, devices, and I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and then I'm going to be reading some scriptures. Verse 10 through 14. But let's talk for a minute about the why. What are the benefits of living in proper spiritual alignment? Well, I need a couple of volunteers. Ron and Kelly, thank you so much. Yeah. Come on up here. Come on up here. I, I, I got a little illustration. They may have to pan the cameras. Pastor, I need you to go over there on that hand. And Kelly, you get to be God today. Woo! Yeah. Right here, that way the light can just illuminate, you know. I knew God was a blonde. <laughs> okay, and, and Ron, I need you to come and, and, and stand right here. Come on, Ronnie boy. Stand right here. And I want to just show you, illustrate it well. Okay, I am the soul. I am the soul. This is God, and I am your soul, and this is the flesh. Body. <laughs> He's so carnal, isn't he? And pastor is your spirit. He represents your spirit. Oh! Now, now Kelly, God, I'm sorry. Uh, in just your normal voice, I want you to begin to communicate with the spirit man. Now, I'm the soul, so, you know, you need to communicate with the spirit. But just have a normal conversation with, with the spirit man over here. And, uh, and then I'm basically going to tell you, just go ahead, go ahead, just start talking to him. Just talk to him. Just, just anything comes to your mind, you're God, so you have lots of things to say. So just, just begin to tell him, you know, talk about the weather. Uh, but, but you know what, I, God, you know what, I, I, just, I just cannot believe some of the people that you allow to come to your church. I can't believe some of the people that you actually allow to lead. Oh, I feel the spirit move, God. I tell you what, I, I know that son of mine, and he's 
going to come to the Lord one of these days. I've been praying for him, praying for him, but, but I still don't understand. You, you remember that lady that came to me the other day, and, and she was so mean? And so, she told me that she was a born-again Christian. I don't know. I tell you what, there's just things in me that just I just don't understand. God, I don't know why you just shouldn't bless me. I see you blessing other people, but I don't know why you, you, you don't bless me. I need a better car. I need a bigger house. What's wrong with me, God? Spirit, did you hear anything that God said to you? <laughs> no? It was tough. No? It was tough. Couldn't hear anything. But you heard the soul, right? Yeah. You heard the soul. Thank you very much. God, you may, may go back there. <laughs> flesh. Get behind me, flesh. <laughs> he was the best flesh. He was. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, what, what is the problem here? What, what is the problem? They couldn't, the spirit part of you couldn't hear a thing that God was speaking. Now think about this from the standpoint of your prayers. I, I'm going to take a turn for this. If we pray and we're not in proper spiritual alignment, we just end up with just a bunch of gibbering and a bunch of jabbering. We begin to pray out of our feelings. We begin to pray out of our, our emotions. We begin to pray out of our physical needs. And we're doing all the talking. But we're not doing any listening. We get it from prayer with no surety. There's no peace. And you know what we do? We walk off mad at God. Because you know God is not listening to me. That's how we are. But listen, he's listening, all right? He's speaking loud and clear, but you can't hear it. And again, God speaks to us in our spirit man or our spirit woman. And then his message filters into our soul and it manifests through our bodies. Take healing, for example. Healing flows from the Holy Spirit as faith is released and then filters through your soul, your heart, and then manifests in your body. That's how healing works. Now, somebody asked, where does faith spring from? Well, the word says that God is the given, he has given each and every one of his watch a measure of faith. But follow with me on this. Listen to how all three parts of you work together in unison. It's not on the board, but it's a scripture you all know real well. Romans 10 9. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in what? Your heart. In your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Now, this is a faith verse. Because the same way you receive salvation by faith, you receive everything else in your life by that same faith. And that's exactly how faith functions. I'm going to ask you a question. What is the mouth part of it? It's your body, right? Your mouth is your body. What, what, what part is your heart? It's your soul part of it. It's your mind, it's your will, and your emotions. So th this is what we can say. As your body declares, and as you believe with your heart and mind, it releases the supernatural power of faith out of your spirit. It connects that faith to God and appropriates the thing that you're praying for. I just threw that in for free. I, I, I think that applies, though, right? It does. Right? That, that's how it works. So here's one of the benefits. The ability to hear God's voice. Being in proper alignment allows you to hear God's voice. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they what? Follow me. Follow me. As I just illustrated, being in proper alignment allows you to hear God's voice. Now, there are many voices that are vying and competing for your attention. And many of those voices, especially today, many of those voices aren't positive at all, are they? No. The world is shouting at you and I every day, trying to get you to align with their philosoph philosophy, their ideology, their beliefs, and their politics. Every day, there is a struggle to control what you think about. <coughs> what voice are you listening to? And then the, the devil and his evil cohorts, they're always bombarding you, bombarding your mind, which is meant to sidetrack you. And at least we forget we're inundated every day 
with content via the media that appeals to the flesh. You know, when you look at the TV and you see that triple-decker hamburger with cheese and bacon fries and a Coke, right? Buying is a voice. It's crying out to you. Or, or even some of the, 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 the commercials now that, that, that sell sexy lingerie. I was going to say Viagra, but I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Whose voice are you listening to? Because it's the loudest voice that usually gets our attention. But here's the thing. God doesn't need to shout. Just like he spoke to Elijah in a still small whisper, when you're in a proper alignment, you can hear what God is speaking into your spirit. Amen. Take the word of God. Pastor brought this up. I understand that we know, we know the, 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 the Bible is the word of God. But have you ever had a time when you tried to read the word, you tried to read your Bible, and it just seemed like it was just words on a page? It didn't go anywhere. It didn't connect at all. Well, listen, this is important. We need to read the word no matter what. Right. But you not only need to read the word with your eyes, with your body, you not only need to read the word from your heart and your mind and your intellect, but did you know that you could read the word through your spirit man, spirit woman? Yes. The Lord quickens that word and it comes alive. But it comes alive in your spirit. And that word will manifest through everything that you do and out of your body. This is the verse I wanted you to turn to. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through 14. It says this. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. I want you to notice, every time I say the word spirit, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. What we have received is not the spirit, lowercase s, of the world, but the spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. Now, this is what we speak. It is not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. Now, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness, and they cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what I want you to think about. Now, we, he's, Paul's talking about the Holy Spirit, and only the Holy Spirit knows the deep thoughts and the deep things of God. But did you know this also parallels with the way that you are aligned? That it is your spirit man that knows the thoughts that you think. The Holy Spirit gives you revelation. He gives you revelation in your spirit man. So when you're not led by your soul, but you're led by your spirit, when you're not led by your flesh, but you're led by your spirit and via through the Holy Spirit, you know what God is thinking about you. Wow. And here's the second benefit. I'll go, I'll go through this quickly. Spiritual protection. He gives you spiritual protection. Psalms 32, 7 says, You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. When we are in proper spiritual alignment, we have the covering. We have the spiritual protection. If God is for us, who can be against us? And listen, there will be people that will come against you. And there will be people who will wound you. And there will be people who, people who will persecute you. And say bad things about you and hurt you deeply. If you operate out of your soul, you will take the offense. But if you walk in spiritual alignment, spirit, soul, and body, you realize that there is nothing, nothing that can be said or nothing that can be done against you that will remove you from the protection and the covering of God. Amen. 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 He's always leading us, guiding us, and caring. That's the benefits of walking and living in spiritual alignment. 
Let's put on the spiritual alignment prayer. And you may want to take a picture of this uh, so that you can pray it. Get your phone out and uh, take a picture of that. Will we have that slide on our Facebook page? Yes. Okay, it'll be on there uh, later this evening or tomorrow. Now, after you've taken a picture of it, and we want to give you these tools, and you might think, well, you know, I thought this was training on, you know, casting out devils and, and that kind of thing. It is. You got to be in spiritual alignment to take authority over the devil. Yeah. Amen. Okay? That's right. And if you're not, then the devil will come and he'll cause more trouble than you have caused him. Yeah. And we don't want that. Okay? So I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to repeat this prayer, the spiritual alignment prayer with me tonight. Just put your hand on your chest. And I want you to pray this with me out loud. Body, body, body. submit to my soul. Submit to my soul. Soul, submit to my spirit. Soul, submit to my spirit. Spirit, submit to the spirit of the living God. Spirit, submit to the spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you're here tonight or you're watching and you don't know Christ, the Bible says if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can have eternal life. Father, if there's anybody that doesn't know you that's here tonight, I pray that they will reach out to you. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the Lord. Good stuff, I'm telling you. I can't wait for next week. It's just getting gooder and gooder. Tomorrow's gonna be